This is the Connecting to Spirit podcast with your host, Susan Norton. Here, you will find ways for you of connecting to spirit. These are true stories. Welcome. Hi, I can't believe I've never told this story before on the podcast. It's the story of how I found this medicine path to begin with. It was 2008, and I was looking for a place to live. And I had always been interested in shamanism. I read books about it. Some guy would be traveling through the jungle or the mountains and have amazing experiences. And I just didn't think I could do anything like that. It was always so far away in some distant land. But I had an interest. So one day I was looking for a place to live, and I call up the landlord, and I'm asking about the apartment. And the woman I spoke to said, well, the lady living here now is a Peruvian shaman. And I'm like, what? (laughs) Amazing. So I got her number because I was going to potentially be her roommate, and I was very excited. So I call her up, and she said her name is Lee, and she says, well, don't move in because of me because I'm moving out. And I'm like, oh, God, my heart just fell. And she goes, but I can meet with you and we can talk. And I was like, all right, that sounds great. So we met at the ABC Cafe in Ithaca, New York, near Cornell. And I walk in and I see this white lady in her 60s, I believe, at the time. And I could just tell that was her because she was so peaceful and centered and grounded. And I go to meet her and we have a talk. And she begins to share with me that she's learning this medicine path from the Four Winds Society and she's taking classes and she begins to describe experiences that she has and that she has had. And I'm like, wow, that is so cool. The way she talked was different. And I began to learn about this training that she was doing. And she was telling me that In June, they were going to go to Peru. She was going to go to Peru to continue her training. And I said, I want to go to Peru. I want to be a shaman. And the words just flew out of me like water. Like it's just like this is the words just came. And I said, when are the dates? Oh, my God, I'm a teacher. I can likely go. And she told me the dates of the trip and my heart just fell. And I said, oh. I can't go. There's no way. That's before the end of the school year. I was a public school teacher at the time, a Spanish teacher. And she looked at me from across the table and said, maybe you're not meant to finish the school year. And in that moment, my reality just cracked. Like, it's as if someone tapped me lightly on my head and my brain just opened. And It just set in motion a series of incidences, which I'll try to describe. First of all, that it was possible. And she said, well, that's happening at the end of June. And there's also this weekend. They were doing an introductory weekend at, I believe it was the Kripalu Institute in New York for this training, a weekend long training. So I go to this training. I signed up. And I sat in a circle in this beautiful room at the Kripalu Institute. And I was so excited and filled with light. And she told me later, she thought it was funny that I didn't even recognize her. It's like I didn't even know who she was because I was so excited about the training. So just during this brief training that lasted several days, one of the things we learned was called a decoupling technique to bring people into a place of balance and stop the fight or flight response. So they taught us how to do this and we were working with partners. And I was with my partner and my eyes were closed and they said, you put one hand under their heart, one hand under their second chakra and you talk to these archetypal animals that were living in their chakras and bring the heartbeat down to that of Mother Earth. So I began to do this technique and I could feel that the energy of this person that they had indeed dropped their heartbeat down to that of Mother Earth. And I felt it 100%. I'm like, oh, that feels good. That feels complete. 
So I began to slowly slide my hands out from under the person. And I looked down and there was white lights coming out from my fingertips. And I was like, wow, I'd never seen that before. I'm like, wow. And also everyone in the class had gone silent. It's like the entire room of people had stopped talking and was looking at me. I didn't even know that they had stopped and they were watching this. And I just thought it was so interesting and exciting. I'm like, oh, okay, that that worked. So powerful. I guess they had finished before me and they were just watching me. It was so cool. So I completed that weekend and I still have that sheet and the little folder. There was a picture on top of it. It says, um, healing the light body. So I had this training. Now I am convinced. I'm like, oh my God, I have to do this training. This is very expensive training. It takes at that point, man, it took years. And they were going to Peru in June for a, I think it was called the Via Illuminata training and journey with Alberto Vialdo and shamans in Peru. So I remembered what my friend Lee had said. So I go up to the principal and, well, I looked at the schedule. I was a Spanish teacher. I had to administer the regent's exam in Spanish. And I looked at the flight schedule and when the dates of the trip were, yes, the trip began before the end of the school year. And I realized that the exam, the state huge regents exam that I needed to give these young people was a day or so before I had to like leave on the flight. So I looked into it and I went to see the principal and I had a conversation. I'm like, I would like to go to this, to Peru, because I was a Spanish teacher and I want to do this healing energy work training. And I presented this possibility that if I was to administer the test and do all my work before the end of the school year, that I could potentially leave. And he needed to think about it. This was a big deal. Just as a side note, if you've ever been in the academics or public school teaching, this doesn't happen. It's impossible. So I wanted to go with all my heart. I was called to go. And this tough Irish principal guy, he's not just going to say yes. And so I'm like, so weeks are going by and I begin to pray and meditate every day. And I began to just like call in with my heart and I would just, I maybe asked him once or twice. There was no answer. He wasn't going to say yes. Then weeks into this prayer and meditation, it must have been like January or February, so there was some time, it was some time away. And I had done some spiritual reading and I was meditating. And this time I was in the bathtub and I relaxed my whole body. And I began to just pray and I just surrendered. And I began to this breathing. And I think I was saying, Allah, Allah. And I was opening my heart. And at this moment, I began to see this like, swirling lights coming toward me and coming out away from me. And this had never happened before. So it felt really good. And I was like, today I'm going to ask him. I have to get my courage together. I'm going to ask him. I'm going to ask him if I may go. So I go to work and I walked into his office. I got to work early. I walked into his office, knocked on the door. And he says, Susan, interesting that you're here. I just signed the proposal and you can go to Peru if you get all of your work done and do all of this loose ends. If everything is 100% done, you can go. And I'm like, oh my God. The day that I had meditated and prayed and saw those swirling lights coming to me is the day that he had signed that sheet. And to this day, I honestly don't know if he even knows why he signed that sheet. I think it's because I was meant to do this work. I was meant to go to Peru, that this was my calling. So I just got to go to Peru, that the whole work came through. And I arrived in Peru. Everyone there was arriving. They already had their medicine bundles. They had been studying shamanism or this medicine path for years. I had nothing. I was probably maybe in my 40s and I had a notebook, a journal, and I had nothing. And I just arrived in Peru. And that's a story for another day. But that is miracle number one that I wanted to share with you and how the way opened before me. And I had to surrender and say yes and 
basically ask for help, but thank you so much and more to come. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This has been a Connecting to Spirit podcast with your host, Susan Norton. If you like what you heard, visit us at connectingtospirit.com forward slash podcast for more listening adventures. Blessings. Oh.